Hi everyone, it's Hans here, the founder of Cappuccino, and welcome to this latest episode of Flat Whites and Insights, a podcast created to allow a space for open, honest and vulnerable conversations with real people, all over a beautiful cup of coffee. We're here in my home, so I'll be providing the flat whites, and my guests, they'll be providing the insights. So grab a coffee for yourselves, take a moment, and I hope you enjoy this latest conversation. Thank you, take care, and enjoy. Chloe, hi. Hi, how are you? Yeah, good. Thank you for coming on, taking some time to join me for Flat White's Insights. And it's great to have you on. I'm looking forward to hearing all about your early career in sports journalism. I know you've been making some noise in, in that area. making And um, already even I saw when you shared that you were coming on this, a few organisations um, taking interest. So it's obviously something that you're passionate about. But for those who don't know who you are, you're right to give a very brief introduction. Yeah, no worries. Um, so yeah, I'm Chloe Boyne and I'm a sports journalism student at Solent University. Um, and I just do a little bit of everything really. So whether that be club media, um, broadcast, a little bit of writing. Yeah, just like dipping my foot in a bit of everything at the moment. So yeah, yeah. thank you for having me on. I'm excited to speak about everything. No, definitely. It's, it's funny. It's one of those we've kind of got to know each other. It was actually at a play to give charity football tournament. Um, yeah. So I'm going to start by talking about them. It's something that's quite local. Yeah. It's a good cause and I know it's something that means a lot to you. Um, and that is how we, I think, first connected. I was at the tournament a couple of years ago with Winter's Wish. Yeah. Um, just playing a bit of five a side. It's the only football I can really play now. My career as a player, is, <laughs> well, it was never there, but it's definitely gone. Um, and it was incredible, really, when I heard about Play to Give and Andrew, who's done so much there. So you right to share a little bit more, because you'll know more than most, I guess, about um, what that cause is all about, actually. Yeah, so Play to Give, it's a charity based in Didcot, which mm -hmm. is always, you know, great. Um, and yeah, so Andrew Baker is the founder, he's the head of everything, runs everything, and like, he's just an incredible person. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's been living with a brain injury, um, and just what he's achieved mm -hmm. is insane. I think it's 22 years since Play to Give, you oh, yeah. know, was kind of like founded, has been going. Um, you know, he's raised so much money, and he's got a really like good group of volunteers around him so um yeah i am actually one of them um yeah. and i've been volunteering for place give since 2019 nice. so yeah it's been quite a long time now and i actually got into that through ncs so i don't know if you know what ncs is but no, no. Sure, so. um it's a national citizen service and it's something that you can do um like when you leave school so okay. it's like nice. in year 11 um in the summer you go and you have like a residential so like the first week you go to like an outdoor kind of yeah. residential thing um the second week we actually went to hill end and did like yeah. a little it was like a glamping kind <laughs> of thing that was quite fun and then the last two weeks is a social action project so you pick a charity yeah. um you do some fundraising for them mm. um we pick play to give and yeah. then i've carried on with it since so yeah i've done quite a lot of stuff for place to give um i mean the biggest thing was the half marathon that i did in october oh, yeah. so yeah that was the oxford one i never thought i'd be able to do that um yeah. but yeah i did that with my boyfriend connor which was really good um i've done the ox5 run i think four times so that's at blenheim nice. palace um even did that through covid and we had to do it virtually so we were just like running around in our local area and then yeah. um just trying to raise some money through that and then, yeah, I guess one of the biggest things is the football tournament, um, which you came to. And I think that's a really great opportunity to just bring loads of people together and put on like yeah. a, a good afternoon of fun. I mean, you saw me running around like a headless chicken, trying to organise everything. Envy, I didn't envy <laughs> yourselves trying to arrange like the referees and everything for that tournament. Oh. I know it's difficult when it's volunteers. and yeah. But, um, but no, it, it was a really good event. And I know it, it raises a lot, brings a lot of uh, local people together. Um, yeah. But, that was my introduction to it, but even just hearing that from yourself, like it's so much more than that football tournament. Yeah. Um, and it's also really cool to hear that you you kind of, I wasn't sure if you were maybe friends with Andrew or how you'd known him, but it's, yeah. it's, it's I guess, huge credit to them as well that you did it as part of that scheme with NCS. Yeah, and no, it, definitely. it clearly was something that 
we felt connected to and wanted to carry on doing so. so yeah, and we've amazing. literally become like best friends since me and Andy. So yeah, yeah. yeah, and it's just like a really good group of people. I mean, we have a charity ball every year as well. Um, so, and we also have the Angela Norris Award. Mm -hmm. um, so that's like to commemorate one of the volunteers. Um, and I've been nominated for it two years in a row, which is really, nice. <laughs> which is really fun. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice celebration. Mm. Um, you know, during the year, just for everything that Place Givers done. And we've also got a really strong connection with the Oxford Children's Hospitals. That's where yeah, a lot yeah. of the money goes. And Andy also received treatment um, mm. from there growing up. Um, and I'll have to give a little shout out to David from the Oxford Children's Hospital because he is the nicest man ever. <laughs> um, so yeah, he comes to a lot of our events okay, and nice. stuff. Um, he came and visited at the tournament too. Yeah. So yeah, David amazing. is a great guy. <laughs> no, amazing. <laughs> And uh, Andy as well, and, yeah. and I think that's that's really nice to hear about that. And and again, I do a lot through Cappuccino with Restore, and yeah. just there's something about not just raising the funds, but it's about community, the yeah. real community feel. And there's since moving to Didcot, it's coming up to five five six years now since I've been in this this area. I'm originally from Wickham, hence I'm a Wickham fan. Yeah, um, for my sins. <laughs> Don't make anyone to support them if they're not from Wickham. To be honest, <laughs> I get a lot of stick at work um, for being a Wickham fan, but but um. Yeah, since coming to the area. And actually, I started to know the community through the football club. Yeah. Now, obviously, sponsor there. I mean, after this chat today, we're going to be going along to one of the yeah. games um, <laughs> against Bracknell. So that should be good. Yeah, it's my first Didcot game as well. First Didcot so, game. So, and I mean, I can't believe I literally lived nearby for so many yes, years. And never you are, came yeah, to one. <laughs> local, local here. And that's, but yeah, it should be good. And it's a lovely place, lovely people. Um, they're having a tough season, but it doesn't knock the kind of positivity around the place yeah um, but yeah community is a massive thing um it seems like similar for yourself but going on to football then and so that is where the majority of your journalism is because yes. i know it's sports journalism yeah i don't know if it's just football but is it um, is that your kind of that's if kind you of could like, do it it would be football yeah. Of, yeah, yeah that's kind of like my forte i mean i enjoy watching um like boxing and like mm -hmm. the ufc as well like i enjoy watching those definitely not doing them <laughs> um but yeah i enjoy watching them um but football is kind yeah, of yeah my main thing um i mean i have also i covered a little bit of sailing <laughs> okay, um different. yeah like last year i went to like the youth national championships for sailing and did like mm -hmm. a little day of work experience which was quite fun yeah. um but yeah I, I mean i'm more than happy to try anything and we are encouraged to do like a variety of sports yeah. but yeah football's my main one nice. <laughs> and when did you your love of football start if you can if you can yeah, remember or was it just Wow, I've just always loved football. Um, I mean, I did used to play um, mm -hmm. when I was a bit younger. Um, and then also before I moved house, I was playing for Wallingford and Cromarsh Ladies. Yeah. I absolutely love all of them. So yeah, <laughs> I miss them so much. Like after moving down to uni, I just mm. miss them. Like, I wish I could still be playing with them. Yeah. Um, so that was like probably the saddest part about moving house. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, just always loved it. Um, my dad, is a United fan and so is my uncle so that's yeah. why I support United um, unfortunately um, and yeah I've just always been into it I mean um, I think my like big love for it came back more during Covid time when you know there wasn't really anything to do besides yeah. watch football on TV I honestly think I was sat there for like 12 mm. hours every day just watching the football yeah <laughs> when it was all like behind closed doors and, yeah and it was just something to to kind of it was a nice distraction in a way from maybe everything that was going on and, and, and no, I felt that and the, the, the period before that where football kind of stopped, Yeah. I didn't think that would impact me as much as it did. Yeah. Because for me, or even like the lower league football, even though I work in football now, mm -hmm. um, but I didn't at the time of lockdown, um, yeah, it was almost like oh, my weekend just didn't feel right without like a game of football going on. Yeah. And I think that was when I kind of realised how much, you know, it is more than just like the game, like to me it's a big part of my self-care. I yeah. talk about self-care and my mental health quite a lot. I like, genuinely missed football so much, yeah. which is quite funny because it's not something people would maybe assume is something that would uh, would help with that, but, um, yeah. but no, cool. So so you were watching a lot of football during yeah. lockdown. At that point, were you doing the kind of, were you already at uni then or was that um, kind of That was before. before? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that kind of just, I guess really lit mm. my kind of like love for football um so I really enjoyed watching it during that time and 
I mean, I originally wasn't going to go to uni to do sports journalism. Um, I was looking at broadcast journalism courses, which, I mean, I, I do really like broadcast, but yeah. like the sports side of it. Um, so, yeah, I was originally looking at broadcast journalism mm -hmm. and then I stumbled across sports journalism. I was like, that's literally the yeah. perfect course for me. Um, so, yeah, I applied, went to some open days. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to the open day at Solon, which is obviously yeah. where I go now, um, it was just amazing. Yeah. And I was like, I have to go here. I mean, the cherry on top was on the open day. They actually gave some of us free tickets to go watch Southampton Leeds that were playing that day. Nice. I mean, it doesn't get much better <laughs> than being able to game go football. watch a football yeah, game. Yeah. So, yeah, me and my dad went with some oh, of the nice. others. Um, and then we had to write a match report from the game as well, oh. um, sent that over. I even made like a little graphic to go yeah. with it. I was definitely being a bit of a tryhard, but... <laughs> oh no, it's the whole point, right? It's an interview trying to get the face. But... Yeah, exactly. So did that and then, yeah, I've really enjoyed my time at Solon mm. so far. So I've just finished first term of second year. Nice. So yeah. yeah, halfway through. Halfway through, <laughs> yeah, I know. And it's, it, will go, it goes quick, trust yeah. me. Even me thinking about when I... I mean, I graduated back in 2016, so much for longer ago than I would like to admit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's um, incredible times and like people you meet on the course, I'm sure. And, and yeah. even I think, and that is a common thing through football, I find anyway, like you were taking, saying about the Wallingford ladies, it's the connections and bonds you form when it's like memories through results or even tough times. And yeah. so much more than just, you know, the people you play yeah the field with. no definitely and I think um as well I took a gap year before going to uni and one of the things that I did during my gap year is I ran our social media for women from Cray Marsh nice. Ladies so that was just like a little you know bit of experience I mm. guess and I mean I was juggling like playing and doing social media yeah, so yeah. um I was quite happy when I would be on the bench because I was like I can get some posts out yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> do some little updates and stuff but that was just like a good little thing to just you know realize this is what I want to mm. do um and then yeah it's just gone up from there I mean mm. um Carl from Northley like yes. he did give me the yes. opportunity to go there he was literally like the first person that spotted what I was doing mm. and got me on board um you know even though I only managed to do a few games because I moved house it was just yeah, great to have that opportunity it is, it's that opportunity and I think full credit to to Carl that's Carl Catling Media yeah um I know he does a lot with the ice hockey and uh, yeah and quite a lot in the local area here but North Lee was the kind of club he got behind I kind of met him a few times first time I met him was actually at um I think it was when Long Crendon played Wickham in the Barks and Bucks Cup yeah and he'd kind of arranged it and they played at Tame and they got a really big crowd yeah and he just seemed like yeah the guy he just loves what he does yeah um, I didn't work for Barks and Bucks at the time I, but I was involved at Didcot and and yeah he just um yeah so seeing that he gave yourself and then Adele as well yeah I saw he gave um yeah and, and now she's, she's working at yeah, Arsenal she works I mean. at Arsenal now so <laughs> yeah it's, it just takes especially when you're young and you're new and you're trying to get into it to see someone spot maybe a talent and yeah. have that belief to say go and have a go um, yeah th that no, must have meant a lot yeah, yeah it really did so like every time I manage to get an opportunity now I'm like straight to message Carl and just mm. say like again just thank you because yeah it really does mean a lot when someone gives you that chance yeah, yeah. um you know I went gave him my all and he's like really supportive of everything that I've done since mm. um so yeah it's just really great to have someone like that I always just say he's like a mentor yeah he's like yeah, yeah. yeah he is literally my mentor so um yeah he's a great guy and he's done so much for obviously like the foot football in the community mm. um and yeah even with ice hockey and everything as you yeah, say I like see, that's great, yeah, yeah he's smashing it so yeah big big props to Carl. Yeah, yeah no definitely it's something that I certainly noticed when I started to look at non-league in the area and so you mentioned there obviously second finishing kind of first term second year yeah alongside your studies um, in the last few years, it really feels like you're wearing many hats now. Yeah. I mean, we were even saying before we hit record, it was like, oh, there's something else I didn't tell you about. Oh, there's something else I didn't tell you about. And so I was even just having a look um, this morning, just yeah. before we went on. So there's a couple that stand out to me. So Eastley yeah. at the moment. So you're part of the media team there. Yeah, yeah. And they are, they're National League, aren't they? National League, yeah. Amazing. Um, so essentially, it's kind of been like a... I don't know, like a journey to yeah. kind of get to there. So 
Um, I'll just quickly talk through how I managed to, no, you know, yeah, get, get I think to just Maybe if anyone's listening and want to yeah. get more involved, how, how it came about, really. Yeah, exactly, because I have, like, spoken to a few people mm. who, you know, want to do sports journalism, and I think it's just quite important to, you know, see, have a bit of progression and, yeah. um, you know, really just, like, what I've done to mm-hmm. kind of get to where I've gotten to. So, um, well, I had, obviously, Northley, um, mm. and at my first game for Northley, it was actually against AFC Stoneham, mm-hmm. um, and it's crazy how things work, because they're actually down in Southampton, yeah. um, and they saw what I was doing for Northley, even though, yeah, again, it was my first game, mm. and it was, a you know, a couple of weeks before I was moving down there for uni, oh, okay. yeah. Um and essentially they got in contact with me and they wanted me to join them when I was down at uni. So, um, yeah, I did that last season. I was the head of media um, and I also had my friend Freddie from uni come do that with me. Um, you know, we made video packages. We also introduced live commentary, um, nice. something that neither of us had ever done that? before. Because um, I've done commentary recorded over back over it and I quite like trying to make it sound live. But I can imagine yeah. actually... Commentary is one of those things that's a lot harder than it, it looks. Yeah, well, <laughs> we were sat there doing it on Twitter spaces. So okay. obviously no one could see the game. You know, it's different mm. from Sky Sports when uh, so everyone can see like what's going on. So you've got, mm. Yeah, so we were literally having to describe, like, everything that was going on. And, you know, we're two, like, first-year students <laughs> back then and we were just, you know, trying to give it a go. And it actually went down a hit. Like, it just it seemed like everyone quite enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, we'd get some good, like, views sometimes, which... You know, it was just nice to see that it was mm. doing well. And we were also the only league, um, not only league, we were the only club in the Wessex League to do commentary at that nice. time. Because um, they're step five at the moment. Mm-hmm. So it um, looks like they're probably going to get promoted as well. Um, but yeah, it was just... Heard it here first. We'll, <laughs> we'll come back to this if they don't. Don't yeah. worry. <laughs> um, but it was just great to, you know, do that and just kind of try and elevate, like, the club's social media presence. Mm. Um, and then... After that, um, with uni, they kind of encourage you to go to Eastleigh because they've got a partnership with Eastleigh yes. with like the sports journalism students. Nice. Um, and me and Freddie, we just thought it was a good opportunity mm. to, you know, go work for a national league club um, and just challenge ourselves. Yeah. As much as we like really enjoyed our time at AFC Stone, like it was just you know, a good opportunity that we felt like yeah. would be worth doing. Um, and then, yeah, so part of the Eastley Media team. Um, and I've done, I did a lot more games near, like, the start of the mm. season because I'm sure we'll move on to it, but with a bunch of amateurs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's we'll kind of been about, taken over we'll my time. That. But, yeah, yeah. It's been, it has been good fun with Eastley. Um, mm. And, I mean, I think everyone can see they've been having... A lot of fun recently. The fact that they might potentially be able to play Manchester United. Yeah, I did um, see your face. So you'll be getting that game, I'm sure. I hope so. <laughs> I really hope so. I mean, it's insane. Yeah, that, they've that's just got even... a replay, haven't they? I can't. Is it? Yeah, against Newport, Newport on yeah, Tuesday. New... So. So yeah, hopefully you get the result there. Yeah, it? I'm gonna literally be begging to do that <laughs> game because that is just insane to me. That mm. that's even a possibility. Yeah, serious, that's that's why the, the cups are so great. The FA Cup. Yeah. Um, League Cup, even you get chances for people to play these, play these, um, play against these clubs, and what a day for Eastley, regardless of the result. Yeah, it will just yeah, be yeah. amazing. So, I mean, I would love to do the media for that game, <laughs> um, but some of the stuff that I have done for Eastley is, you know, done um, posts on like the social media. Mm-hmm. So there's usually someone that will do the Instagram or yeah, like yeah. Twitter updates, that kind of thing. Someone does a match report. But one of the things that I have done quite a lot for Eastley is I've actually filmed the games um, and we filmed them for TNT Sports. So, oh, nice. yeah, so that's, that's pretty really cool. Really good experience. As yeah. Well. yeah. So I actually went up to um, the TNT Sport training day, um, okay. like for filming. So that was up in Chesterfield. Yeah. Um, I think that was in like August or something like that. Um, literally did the trek all the way up from Southampton to go to Chesterfield. Um, yeah, that was a very busy day. I think it was like a five hour journey yeah, each yeah. way, um, but it was worth it. So yeah, I went to Chesterfield Stadium nice. um, and then yeah, learned how to use all of the like equipment. Um, so yeah, that was good fun. And then, I mean, I even went to the Silver Lake on my mm-hmm. birthday 
it was raining, it was windy, I was up the gantry and I was filming the game yeah, on my birthday. Yeah. And it was the game against Oxford City where I'm pretty sure they came back to draw two all in like uh, the last minutes. That was uh, a yeah, <laughs> nice a, birthday present. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. And Oxford um, City, obviously a club that I, uh, local here. Yeah. There are a few people there doing it. I think Simon Godfrey does a lot of the photography yes, there. Yes, yeah, I do um, follow him on Twitter yeah, and see some of his stuff. And I actually had one of their players, his episode's just gone live, but Josh Parker, mm -hmm. he was on this podcast, so his his um, episode is, is out now. Yeah. Um, definitely by the time this goes out, but really cool to hear, hear like a footballer's perspective. Um, yeah, no, definitely. And like Andy as well from the media team. Yeah, no, Andy, yeah. It's he, funny, it's a small world. Yeah. Once, you, once you get into the, the kind of football world, particularly non-league, level yeah um, everyone seems to know everyone really. no honestly and he is such a nice guy as well um he even helped me with one of my uni assessments i literally just pinged him a message mm. and i was like would you mind sending me a voice note to go <laughs> in my um, little package because he did the oxford half marathon as well oh, nice. um so yeah i messaged him and i was like do you mind just sending me like a little 30 second thing and he did and it was yeah. really helpful he's just such a nice guy and yeah. i know quite a lot of other people know him and they all say the same thing yeah, no, which is, it's nice. And I think that's it in a, in football, because everyone knows everyone. It's almost that, you know, you just be, be genuine, be authentic and just, you know, make, you want to make sure that people want to yeah. work with you and give that energy and, and offer to clubs. And so it's great. Now, someone that you did mention, a bunch of amateurs, there'll yeah. be a lot of people, especially maybe people who are watching yeah. this on YouTube who, who know about that channel, probably most well known recently for Dorking. Yeah. For like Mark White. Um, yeah, it's kind I of, think uh, everyone's fallen in love with fall, Mark Yeah, White. exactly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I went to Oxford City Dorking recently and a bunch of amateurs were there. Yeah. But um, it was funny because even like my mate who I was going with, we were like, oh, we want to stand by the dugouts and, and watch oh, by the dugouts just so yeah. we could like, <laughs> it was like the Mark White show. It was quite funny. Yeah. Um, but obviously, fair play to him. He owned the club. I had a little look yeah. into it. So he's basically taken that club. Yeah. Silly amount of promotions in 20 years, like over 10 promotions in 20 years or so. Yeah, it's crazy. It's still manages. So they're actually a success on the pitch. Yeah. It's not just the off the pitch stuff, but yeah. a bunch of amateurs has helped them. And so it must be really cool to, to be on that team and, and what an opportunity again. Yeah. Um, I mean, basically, I saw, I followed their account for a while mm. um, and I saw they put something on Twitter saying that they were looking for freelance runners and camera operators and i was like again that is right down my street i <laughs> yeah, was like yeah. you know what that is something that i definitely need to just like at least message about and just find mm. out some more um i'd be really silly not to yeah. so that's the thing with sports journalism as well is you just have to take every opportunity um you know everything you see at least just try and mm connect with yeah, someone yeah. about it that is a really important thing with sports journalism mm. is the connections that you make um and i thought you know what i'm gonna have to find out some more about this yeah. this sounds amazing i watched um the trailer for their new series and as soon as i saw like drone shots and everything i was like oh my god like this is <laughs> yeah, insane like it's, it's, proper, it's like really well done isn't it it's a yeah. very very professional team though, it yeah. really is and then, ironically considering they're a cool bunch of amateurs but the team yeah is actually, it's not amateurish <laughs> at all the work that they actually do it's really yeah the, the yeah. work that's produced is just next level and i think everyone loves the series because mm. it's just so good yeah. <laughs> um and yeah it's just amazing to think that i'm a part of it so mm. Yeah, ended up having a call with Rich, who's like the main guy um, who, you know, set everything up. Um, lovely guy. He's also just so funny. I think sometimes he's not even trying to be, but he's just so funny. Um, and then Jack, who um, I like get a lift with and stuff okay. to the games and everything as well. Again, I've been saying this about everyone, but nicest guy ever. Like he's genuinely just lovely. Yeah. And again, it's just so funny. Um, it would have been a bit awkward if we were sharing a car journey and he wasn't. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to say that on camera. No, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I literally love all of them. They're all just so nice. Um, it's a really great team. And, you know, you've got people from like all different ages as well. I have to also say, if Greg ends up watching this, that he is so funny as well. Like <laughs> he's hilarious. Um, but yeah, everyone there is great. Mm. Everyone's kind of got their own story and their own stuff that they do. I mean, you might know Luke, who does some filming for Wickham. Luke Jarrett? Yeah, yeah. the name rings a bell. I, I wouldn't, yeah. I've never had a conversation with him. Yeah. But I know he does quite a lot of Wickham Wanderers as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's really nice as well. So it's just good to have people on the team mm. who, you know, they've got so much experience. There's some which 
um, have a lot of camera experience and then there's some of us which are just you know just getting started yeah. and learning on the job um, so a lot of the stuff that I do is as a runner um, it does mean you're getting your steps in yeah. Um, yeah so you're just constantly going and getting whatever anyone needs uh, responsible for the GoPros and mm -hmm. a bench cam and just making sure everything runs smoothly yeah. uh, during a shoot day. But yeah, it's just really rewarding. And I'm excited mm. to see the episodes come out that I've like contributed on yeah. and just think, you know, I was actually a part, a part of that. that. Yeah. And then um, obviously I mentioned to you before we started recording that a um, bunch of amateurs have started a new show as well. Mm -hmm. So I know the Dorking one has been a huge hit, yeah, yeah. but we now have a show about Rains Park Vale, which should be mm -hmm. coming out hopefully this month. Um, Again, they're a great club. Yeah. Um, I believe they're step four. Um, and yeah, a great club, mm -hmm. great people there. And it's just got a lot of character. Like yeah. even just the ground, like, yeah, when you see it on the episodes, <laughs> you'll see it's like got some little quirks and yeah. yeah, it's been great fun filming there. So the manager, Josh Gallagher, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, he is just really nice and he's just a proper football person. Mm. Um, he gives really good interviews and that's another thing is a lot of the players you know they've not been used to yeah. being interviewed and stuff like that it's almost new but, for them but yeah. they've got to almost work with it as well yeah so i can imagine it's especially in the journalism side or if you're you're looking to to do that con produce that content the players have got to, it it's it comes from the players and the management like if they were a bit hesitant to not want to get buy into it yeah it then makes it makes it really difficult um, but part of that, and you're saying about their energy and they want to give it, part of that, you've got to give credit to yourself because it's you're creating a space where they feel comfortable to talk. And that's part of the skill, I think, of doing the interviews and doing the journalism side is yeah. almost, you're like a friendly face, you're on their side. It's not like, you know, you see some of these interviews with the managers after games and trying to catch them out. It's, yeah. it's a chance as well. It's a platform for them. A hundred percent. I think, you know, they've all embraced it mm. so much. Um, and they've all got like big personalities and yeah. characters. So I think when everyone watches the series, like they're just going to fall in love with all of them because it's yeah. it's so funny. I mean, um, one of their videos on Twitter got quite a lot of views because they do a Christmas social thing where they go to Winter Wonderland and they dress up in fancy dress. Yeah. They were all dressed up as like WWE characters and there's a <laughs> video of them in the pub and one of them's like body slamming the other. Like it's yeah, so yeah. funny and they're just they're just all really friendly and you know they're more than happy to have a chat with you like yeah, in the yeah. bar and stuff like they're just a great yeah. like a great club and all of the like staff there are lovely and yeah you're just made to feel really welcome yeah. so i think that's one of the things i like about non-league football as well is yeah, 100%. it is a community like no yeah. matter really what club you go to and i have like a lot of support from you know just people from clubs or clubs mm. themselves i mean there's um blackfield and langley which is a club like down southampton okay. way they're always really nice to me like they <laughs> yeah. just you know give me bits think, of support and yeah, stuff on twitter clubs, and that's what it's about clubs like like to see the, the game the non-league mm. game getting that coverage and i think again it's it comes from a place of passion for the sport and passion for the people and i like say then maybe historically didn't always have that coverage yeah. i really feel like in the last four or five years online coverage of the non-league game probably since the lockdown pandemic has, yeah. has really grown but I think that's amazing because like you say about the little quirks or or supporters from different clubs and you hear about there's so much more than just the football on the pitch it's those yeah. communities around it and now with day job working at Barks and Bucks FA we obviously I deal with a lot of club committees people at clubs coaches managers and you kind of I, I didn't realize how much went into running football yeah. until I started that job Even yeah like, and now with conversations with people at Didcot like so much goes into it and people giving up their time and a lot of them unpaid and it's just to keep keep football going and it shows like the power of the game so I can see why clubs love it when people want to cover that yeah and, and just kind of a put a spotlight yeah, yeah. on it and yeah I have I think I have just really fallen in love with non-league football yeah, it's just yeah. such good fun I mean on Boxing Day I went and watched my local mm. um so that's Littleton um and yeah unfortunately though literally yesterday um, my nan's cousin passed away and he worked at Littleton at like the football club and you know he is literally like a Littleton legend yeah. um, I saw everyone like commenting on the Twitter thing last night and they were all just saying about how much of like a football person he was and it really does show that the volunteers are like I mean they were describing him as the heartbeat of the club yeah. like 
that just really does go to show, you know, the power that people have within mm. grassroots football. And yeah, I mean, as well with my granddad, for example, um, I mean, so with my most recent uni assessment, we yeah. had to write a feature article and I thought, hmm, who am I going to interview and write about? Yeah. And I actually did it about my granddad. Um, because he's done so much for grassroots mm. football. I think this is another reason why I'm just such a football person. It's just because just my family your, your is just like, family, yeah. literally. So um, he actually has pretty much dedicated his whole life to football. Mm. Um, and he also set up the Evesham Ambassador Football League in Worcestershire. Oh. Um, so that started off with school football. Mm. Um it was pretty much non-existent um, at yeah. the time. So it was when my uncle was wanting to play football. My granddad went in, yeah. basically, you know, got a group of people together from all the different schools and it just blew up and it yeah. turned into a league that now has like 3,000 children playing in every yeah. weekend. And it's just amazing. Yeah, that you all know. came from, from him. Yeah, yeah. And so that's still going now and will go on and... And yeah, carry on, so. it's really great, and I mean, he's still a bit of everything at um, Littleton as well. Mm -hmm. So again, my my family just Littleton Football yeah, yeah. Club is just like for them. So um, for little, he does a lot of stuff with Littleton Juniors. Yeah. Um, so he's like the welfare officer, the mm -hmm. treasurer, the secretary. He's like oh yeah, everything. on the committee. We find that sometimes with, with these clubs, you get people who just love the club yeah yeah and it's just really great and i know there's a lot of people you know in this area as well who are just they love their clubs and it's yeah. just great to see but yeah when i was doing my feature article i was like who's got a story to tell and i thought my granddad because yeah, like if you search him up there's nothing about him whatsoever there's like an article from the Evesham Journal from like 2008 saying that yeah, he got yeah. nominated for some like award or something. Yeah, yeah. Like, and like no disrespect to that journal, but I don't think that's exactly going to yeah. get <laughs> loads, of, loads and loads of hits. But again, yeah. it shows there's so many untold stories in, in the game. Yeah. So it must have been, and I'm, I'm sure he really like loved, really appreciate the fact you you chose to do it on himself as well. Yeah. Um, the one, one thing though is he's so humble <laughs> to the point where like, he hasn't even read the like read the essay that I wrote oh, about him find it yet. To read. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. so. I think he just like he doesn't want to read it because mm. it's all about him. So I said I'm gonna have to send it to my uncle and get him to tell him the nice bits. Yeah. But I I literally only revealed at the end of it as well that it was about my granddad. Uh, I was just calling him David Hyde throughout, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to drop the bombshell at the end. Nice, so I was like, like I was like, and that's the story about my granddad. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice little mic drop moment. <laughs> yeah, no, literally. So I left that until the last line. Um, but yeah, I just think it's great, you know, being able to tell these kind of mm. stories that, as you say, all of these untold ones. I think mm. one of the things that I would love to do is I would love to probably... I guess kind of do what you're doing where you interview people and just find out more about them yeah. and just like give a platform yeah, to yeah. these people that's who, what that's yeah. what i love like i say i love stories people's stories um where they come from and there's some people that you, you i've had on the podcast for example and this conversation what we've had is so totally different to what i expected to have yeah. there's others who kind of come on and it's a bit more you know the story they want to tell but for me it's such a big thing and i think that's why i'm so interested in people's stories is because for so long, I guess until I was 22, which you're still not even 22 yet, are you? Which no, I'm 22 this so year yeah. though. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that makes me feel slightly yeah, better. Yeah, I was 22 <laughs> when I like discovered mental health and and, and um, kind of really knew, found out who I was. Um, yeah. But again, so I'd been living like this story I created for myself. And we said before we hit record about uni, and so I was saying yeah. that I did chemistry, I started my PhD, um, just thought that was the path I wanted to go on just wasn't um and then coming to terms with that was quite difficult but um but yeah hearing people's stories and then people's why and, and um, i think even just there where you're talking about telling stories and untold stories it shows yeah. probably a big reason why journalism is something that you love because yeah. whether that's in sport whatever field it is yeah. it's about the people because the people make the stories people make the content yeah and so it's amazing but um something i did want to ask um, yeah. before we kind of wrap up is so and I noticed as well from when you were saying about people who've been your mentors people who've guided they've all been male yeah so firstly I think that's really important to see men supporting women to get into the yeah. into the journalism space but have you since obviously the lionesses and, and yeah. everything going in terms of the growth of the women's game have have you faced any challenges or do you think there's been any challenges being like a young 
yeah woman trying to get into it yeah so i think recently it's been quite a hard time i think mm. we all know what i'm probably alluding to um yep. yeah it's been just a bit of a difficult time you know reading what people have to say on pretty much every platform it's not just mm. twitter at this point is it it's literally no. everywhere and it's just disappointing that so many people kind of agree with some things that have yeah, been yeah. said it's actually quite worrying the amount of people which have you know shown that they support those kind of beliefs yeah i saw one which was a poll about do you think men's and women's football are different sports yeah and it was like 55 percent of people said yes yeah it's really it's really sport. bizarre like, to me <laughs> i don't understand that yeah yeah um it's just quite concerning and you know it makes it difficult yeah as like a young woman like in this space to think that people think you don't belong here um it's already difficult enough trying to like be in this industry as a yeah. girl um and then it's just even harder when people with big platforms mm. try and you know bring people down um but i think one thing for me is you know you can read it and stuff but i really do try just not to let it get to me i did have mm. like a horrible tiktok comment like oh, not too long ago and it was some yeah, it was just some like troll yeah, account essentially troll, yeah, and yeah. And he was just commenting on my stuff and he was going, oh, um, just remember, you've only got these opportunities because you're a woman, like all this. And he was like, never forget that. I mean, I did kind of laugh, though, because I initially replied to his comment and he replied within a second. This this guy had uh, literally so commented. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. he literally commented on my TikTok like three hours before at like six in the morning and then replied two seconds later. So I thought, you've probably got nothing better to do anyways. Yeah, exactly. Um, it says more about more about him than, than yeah. yourself. But um yeah. But yeah, it's that and unfortunately I think that is the thing, isn't it? Is the more the bigger the sport gets, the bigger the platform. Yeah. The more you know, more attention it's bringing to it. And whether that's positive attention, there's also the flip side. Yeah. But a lot of it I just, I just think it's people who they almost can't accept the fact that you know yeah. women's football has become is now accepted and it is a big sport. You look at the viewing figures for the yeah. the World Cup, the Euros, and yeah. And I mean, we're not going anywhere. No, exactly. So. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> He's gonna have to just deal with it. Um, but yeah, I just think it's great though because women's football has been growing. I mean, mm. I did one of my recent assessments as well. Um, I actually did it about the growth of the lionesses funnily enough oh, there we go. um i had to make a like two minute uh audio package mm -hmm. um and i got some interviews with some people um again i'll give them a little shout out um yeah, so yeah <laughs> connor roberts um from the all for united women's channel um again he's a He's just a great person. Um, he's been really supportive throughout my whole like sports journalism mm. journey. I mean, he gave me an opportunity again, kind of like Carl, like um, back near. Well, it's like when I first went to uni. Yeah. Um, he had me on one of their live shows on YouTube, nice. which was great, and I've been like a good friend um, mm. of his since. Um, so he gave me a little voice note for my thing. Um, I also had some of the Vavil guys on there as well yeah. to help me out with my thing. So, yeah, it was just kind of about the growth of the women's game. Um, and I also did some positives and negatives of that. I did mm -hmm. kind of like some negatives to do with, uh, like, player safety. I'm sure you've yeah. probably seen some stuff about that recently with, like, the issues to do with accessibility mm. um, and kind of the entitlement yeah, of fans. Yeah, sometimes and, I, think I saw that when people were, like, tweeting yeah oh like they waited and you didn't come say hi it's like well that that's not that at the end of the day they're there to perform like yeah it's and it is difficult maybe if they're people who had originally been to to women's football and that yeah. was always what could could happen a bit like at non-league like we'll yeah. see it did cut players will come in the bar afterwards everyone can have a chat but yeah. as the game grows and becomes more professional you can't do that with everyone yeah it's just and not so possible it's, it's not possible and i think actually something we noticed was so when england played usa yeah um, at Wembley after the Euros win and yeah. it was like European champions against world champions so I was went to, managed to get tickets to that game and that was really cool um, through one of the thing, good things of working I guess Parks and Bucks FA yeah. Get tickets <laughs> most, yeah but um, yeah suddenly there were queues for tickets and I could see people promoting yeah. it was almost like that's the flip side of it is yeah. suddenly it's not just oh I can go if I fancy it and it's going to get a bit more expensive because yeah 
it's got more demand and yeah, no, you've got definitely. to accept that as the game grows and becomes more professional. It's, it yeah, it's just how it goes. And I think everyone should just like embrace it. And, mm. you know, it's a positive thing. And I just think people need to kind of just remember the lines because these are professional players. Yeah. Um, you know, if you still want to be able to go to the games and stuff, you just need to bear that in mind yeah. before it gets and a bit they're, they're professional players, control. but also they are people too yeah and not just in the women's game men's game some of the comments you see or even like yourself yeah. with that tiktok comment someone not really thinking that that's a young yeah. person who's behind that rather than just thinking about the content and yeah and yeah just yeah. no exactly but like it's a perfect thing like you said it's, just, it's it's a them problem it's not a you problem. yeah like if you were to or i even think like i know i'm putting a podcast out or putting my stuff on social media I don't intend to. I mean, it's not big enough to really get loads of comments in that. But yeah. for me, the conversation and the quality of the conversations I have is almost why I do it. Yeah. However many views or engagements it gets, yeah. that's great. But it's about hearing someone's story. And, and then a platform for you as well to kind of talk about what you're doing. And, yeah. Uh, no, and it's really 100%. cool. And I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty sure that you're, you're going places. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I say, I mean, you're still only 21 and you've already listed off all those things. I mean, you mentioned Vavil as well, though, and we hadn't spoken about yeah. doing writing for them. So... It's the experience that you're gaining yeah. is, is incredible, really, considering you're still at university. So. Yeah, I mean, with Vavil, I think um, as well, just if there is anyone watching this who mm. wants to get into sports journalism, mm -hmm. honestly, write for Vavil because yeah, yeah. it's a great opportunity. They take people with, you know, basically you don't have to have any experience mm -hmm. um, and they'll give you an opportunity and a platform to, you know, just write about mm -hmm. football, which... I mean, you can't really go wrong with that. No, and you can yeah. get opportunities from it. I mean, I even went in the press box at St. Mary's for the Southampton women versus Arsenal game, nice. which was just an, an amazing opportunity. So, yeah, they do give that platform mm. to people. And we've got, I think mean, there's even some 14-year-olds or 15-year-olds that, like, write for mm. it. And they're so talented. Yeah. So, Vavil is a really good Love place that. for that. And I've made so many friends through Vavil. Um, they are literally my like support network. Yeah. Like they are great. They definitely know more about me than they wish like that they <laughs> did. <laughs> Cause the amount of times I'm in our group chat and I'm like, guys, this just happened. Yeah. This just happened. I literally told them earlier that I was going to go buy a jumper because I didn't bring one. Yeah. Like, they're like, <laughs> they have the life updates. But. <laughs> literally, but they are all just so supportive yeah. and yeah, they're just lovely. So nice. a big shout out to all of my like Vavil friends. Yeah. So that's like the women's office more specifically. Okay. Um, yes. yeah. yeah, they are great. So there's like Amazing. Finn, Reese, Harry, I mean, just all of them. Like, I wish I could name all of them, but yeah, yeah, they are just an amazing bunch and they're all really talented. And I think the best bit as well is we're all just seeing each other's journey. Mm. I mean, there's a couple of them that work for Football Manager now nice. as like researchers, yeah, yeah. which is insane. Um, you know, we've got people getting interviews for ESPN and the BBC mm. and everyone's just absolutely smashing it and people are in press boxes and press conferences yeah. like every day. Yeah, it's, it's just it's amazing. Yeah. And I think it's, you mentioned that support group as well. I think it's a bit like, say there's people I went to university with that, that I still am in touch with now and it's awesome seeing how we've kind of grown and, and, and going along the way and supporting each other along the way and, and just like, yeah, being each other's biggest cheerleaders. But yeah. also... Um, I think something I've definitely taken from this um, is anyone who wants to get into sports journalism. And I kind of feel the same with, say, even getting people on my podcast, etc. It's like, if you don't ask, then you never know. If yeah. you see an opportunity or someone that you would like to learn from. Yeah. Because some people would love to, they'd see it as a real compliment if you say, oh, I love the content you're producing. Can I come along and observe for a day or can I come yeah. and see what you're doing? And the connections, like you, like you say, um, as much as people want, it, it's obviously based off talent. Yeah. A strong network is never going to be a disadvantage. Oh, if you have connections, yeah. like that's never going to be a disadvantage. It's so, the yeah. most helpful thing ever. And I think as well, again, if anyone's wanting to do sports journalism, one thing that I just can't stress enough is the power of Twitter. Well, obviously it's X now, but I will never call it X. It is literally <laughs> Twitter to me. Um, but just like growing your Twitter and connecting with people. I found that's been really Especially helpful like for me. Non-league Twitter is like, it's, yeah, I've used the word, yeah. Non-league, that is that seems to be the platform where yeah. I only really am on it now really for the football side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twitter is literally, yeah, my whole thing is just football. Mm. That's, all it, that's all it is really. But it's great because you can just connect with so many people. I've, you know, got 
a lot of connections with other sports journalism mm -hmm. students. Um, and then, yeah, you have all the clubs on there and the possibilities are kind of like mm -hmm. endless on there. So I've just kind of been like growing mine steadily yeah. over time. And right. yeah, it's just, it's just great yeah. on there. I, I think do so. love it. I think the limit is, is yourself in a way. To yeah. people, not to get too deep in it. Like if you, yeah. if you're unsure about asking the question, ask it. The worst that happens is you, is you get a no. Yeah, you just need to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. That's what I found. And as I said earlier, just take every opportunity that comes to you. And, you know, you might have a local club down the road. Just offer to help yeah. and just... It's a bit like myself with Digcop. Yeah. I mean, I got on board as a sponsor, but now I do, like, their stats for the programme and I yeah. help out with socials. I was interviewing them, the yeah, manager I at training on Thursday. Yeah. And I don't have any training in the media side, but yeah. it helps doing the podcast. And for me, it's just, you know, giving back to the club and then the fans appreciate hearing yeah. the manager... Um, so yeah, it's just just contributing where you can. But um, I think I'm wary constant time. Yeah, no, there's, that's fine. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's been great. There's so yeah. much. I say there's so much that we could talk about. I mean, fellow like passionate about football, we could sit yeah. there and talk about it all day. Um, we'll probably carry on talking about it off camera. Oh yeah. Big talk, so it's fine. <laughs> but um, a question that I ask everyone. Yeah. Is what does happiness mean to you? God. <laughs> Oh no! Um, <laughs> God, you really put me on the spot and you can't with this say, one. And you can't say United winning the Premier League yeah, this time oh. again because it, it won't happen. No, no I've not. Ex I don't. I've not experienced that. <laughs> no, have you not, oh wow, that makes me feel. <laughs> that makes me feel old. Um, so yeah, what what is happiness? Like um, to you? Well, I'd like to think. Like, I just try and be as much of, like, a positive person as I can be. I mean, you can probably tell from this, I'm, like, the chattiest person ever. I mean, as well, I think one thing that's good is just, like, looking at the little things. I was sat on the train earlier and I was literally smiling because there was, like, a really cute horse, like, running in the field next to the train. But appreciate But, yeah, the it's just, like, the little things. And I think I'm trying to do that a lot more, mm -hmm. uh, like, this year as well, you know, when it's, like, the reset at the start of the year and you're trying to think, you know, mm -hmm. what like what do you kind of want to do more yeah, and I was right. just thinking like just be grateful for things and even just the little things so yeah literally just like even though it was a horse earlier I was like that was just like it just made me smile and also you know when I said earlier like I had a really nice uber driver yeah, it's just, yeah, just even just the little things like that and I think again these kind of conversations and just people like mm. I like to think I'm just quite a people person yeah. I love having a chat and it's just you know, nice to have those connections with yeah. people. And yeah, I just try and be as happy as I can. Yeah, so I guess I happiness that. is, yeah, the little things and just like having good people around you and just yeah. having a laugh, really. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's so true. I was just, yeah, having a laugh and just looking for that, that joy in, in the little things. And um, yeah. I think particularly um, your generation, and, and like you've grown up obviously with social media. Yeah. Um, as you say, even that, like the little horse in the film. Yeah. It's like trying to find it. And I know we've just been talking about x or twitter yeah and how important it is to connect but i think it's also important to have those times really where you're away from the screens yeah. and just like you said just finding the joy in, in the little things and people because yeah connection with a person face to face and that's why i love trying to do this podcast face to face where i yeah. can because it's it's great having a conversation over teams or zoom but yeah there's something nice about actually you know being in the room and and and, and getting that energy from you like what you're saying about that positivity and everything like that so no I've really enjoyed it yeah I really have too um, so thank great. you for no, inviting me no, it was definitely right. worth the journey <laughs> yeah I know I didn't I thought I thought you might have been coming with us from local from Oxfordshire and then we were like oh yeah I'm on the train already I was like yeah geez, what time are we getting so no really do appreciate it and obviously yeah hopefully positive result for, for Diddy yes, as well yes so hopefully just, just go enjoy the game but thanks so much Clary yeah nice. thank you thank you Thank you so much for tuning in to this latest episode of Flat Whites and Insights and I really hope you gained something from that conversation. I know I certainly did. It would mean a lot if you can like and subscribe on whatever platform you may be watching or listening on. But also, if you head over to Instagram and give me a follow at Cappuccino. This is the best place to contact me, but also see the latest developments on the platform as we look to increase awareness of mental health through my passions for coffee and football. In addition, if you've heard something that you can relate to or you want to talk about a little bit more, feel free to message me on that platform. But also, if you fancy coming on yourself and having a conversation, then 
do let me know because I'm always keen to connect with new people and get insights into other areas and other passions and other challenges that I might have no experience of myself. Thanks again, and I really hope you tune in for the next episode. Take care of yourselves. I've been Hans. Thank you.